great. So you know quite a lot about Peter already, and uh, we're going to learn a little bit more about him uh, today. Because Peter is one of my favourite Bible characters. It's a tough one between him and the Old Testament Joseph. Those would be my two favourite. But I think Peter just pips it. He met this man called Jesus. And Jesus said to him, follow me. And as we've already heard, he gave up everything. Gave up his livelihood to follow Jesus. And within a short time, he realised that this person he was following wasn't just another rabbi, or in our language, another teacher, because miracles were happening. Healings were happening. Jesus said, go out in your boat and throw your net over the other side, and he'd have a huge catch. That was not normal. That was not every day. I mean, Jesus even healed his mother-in-law, and Jane talked about, in fact, he had a uh, mother-in-law. He even healed Peter's mother-in-law, which Peter was well pleased with because it gave him brownie points for his wife for many, many days. And then, over this time of three years of hanging out with Jesus, we see this pattern with Peter. And you've picked it up brilliantly in the facts. This is what happens with Peter. He has great moments, and he has hugely embarrassing moments. He has highs and he has lows, he has ups, and he has downs. If you can see on the screen, Peter's journey with Jesus was a little bit like that, up and down, up and down. I mean, for example, Peter says, you're the Messiah. When Jesus asks his followers, who do you say I am? He's the first person to recognize who Jesus truly is. That's a great moment. But then, as someone's already said, he cut off the ear of the soldier when Jesus was arrested. And that was not a great moment. And that's how it was with Peter. Up and down. Great moments, embarrassing moments. Highs and lows. And if we're honest, and maybe this is why we like Peter, aren't we just like him? Don't we have great moments? And don't we have really embarrassing moments? When I was 17, I passed my driving test. It was a great moment. First time, 10 lessons only, I was on top of the world. That night, I said to my mum, can I borrow the car? She said, yes, picked up my friends. We were going out, first night. I was ecstatic, I could drive. Great moment. My first trip out after passing my driving test, I hit a pedestrian. <laughs> Thankfully, it was the sister of a friend of mine. I think. <laughs> what I mean by that is that... <laughs> Let me explain. I fortunately was only going 20 miles an hour, honest, and she ran out, she was being chased by someone else down an alleyway, and she ran out into the road, and I'm, I caught her on the edge of my car, and she was fine. But it did make me think that actually this driving malarkey can be quite serious. We have, don't we, great moments and embarrassing, awkward, difficult moments. But as we learned last week, as Mary was talking about uh, last week, when we're following Jesus, it's not about how we start, but it's how we keep going, how we endure that enables us to grow. And I'm sure if you ask Peter, what was your lowest moment? It was when Jesus was arrested and Peter, who was so fearful at that moment that he might be next, he says, I have never heard of this man three times. He denies him three times. And that could have been the end for Peter. It could have been all over at that moment. It could have been that that's the last we ever hear from him. He could have at that moment think, I can't come back from this. I'm just going to go home and go fishing. But Jesus was not ready to give up on Peter. And nor was Peter. Somehow Peter clings on at that moment. And sometimes, do you know what? That's all we can do. 
Sometimes we just cling on to Jesus. Because, do you know what? Jesus is not ready to give up on any of us. So after the resurrection, Peter and Jesus have a barbecue on the beach. And they sort it all out. And after that moment, something seems to click in Peter's life. And he was never the same again. What had changed? Well, he'd seen Jesus being killed, but he'd seen him resurrected three days later. And even though Jim highlighted his lack of athletic ability, he got there and saw the empty tomb and met the risen Jesus. At that barbecue on the beach, Jesus forgives him for his betrayal. And also at that same barbecue, Jesus gives him a task to build the church, to, sh- to love his sheep. But something else happened as well around about that time because Peter was never the same again. He had a new confidence, a new power, and a new boldness. And we're going to watch a short video now which will tell us why this happened to Peter. Thank you, Lauren. Stories of the Bible. God sends the Holy Spirit. These are the apostles. Hello. They followed Jesus during his time on earth. Before Jesus went to heaven, he told them to stay in Jerusalem until God sent the gift he promised. See ya. So after Jesus went to heaven, the apostles stayed in Jerusalem along with the other people who believed in Jesus. One day they were all gathered together when there was a sound from heaven like a mighty windstorm. Whoa! Then what looked like flames appeared and settled on each of them and everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in other languages and so they started speaking. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, they came running to see what it was. What's going on? When they saw the believers speaking in their own languages, they were shocked and amazed. Hey, Jesus! They wondered, how can this be? These people are from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages about the wonderful things God has done. What can this mean? But others in the crowd didn't believe that it was really a miracle and thought the believers were just acting oddly. (sighs) Then Peter stepped forward and shouted to the crowd, Hey, all you! Listen carefully, all you! He told them that they were not acting strangely, but that this was from God. He reminded them that God said this would happen long ago. Then Peter told them about how Jesus was crucified, but then raised to life again, just as God had said he would be. He told them that Jesus was now in heaven and that God had given the Holy Spirit to them as he had promised. Peter's words changed what the people thought and felt, and they asked, Brothers, what should we do? Peter told them, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow! Peter continued to preach to the crowd for a long time, and those who believed what Peter said were baptized. 3,000 people were baptized and added to the church that day. Then all the believers listened to the apostles' teaching and practiced what they taught. Hey! They met together in fellowship, shared meals, and prayed together. They were amazed as the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Here you go. Take this. Ah, thank you. They helped those in need. Here, this is for you. Thank you. Worshiped together at the temple every day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy all while praising God and enjoying each other. And each day, God added to their fellowship those who were being... Now, that's one of the problems, isn't it, with our lives, is that we can be really 
uh, we can feel really confident. We can be going along really well, but then suddenly the circumstances change and suddenly we feel less confident. And what we want to talk about today is the fact that Peter was confident whatever happened. Later on, he was arrested and he still remained confident because something had happened and we're going to learn all about that. Now, we looked at the video there and we had the story of Pentecost and we see that the Holy Spirit is described as a rushing wind and wind gives things power. It's a little bit like this pinwheel. And hopefully, kids, you've all got yours in your packs. And what I'd like you to do over the next few minutes is to make yours up. Now, this is one that I made yesterday. And if I can make it, because my craft skills are minimal, then you can definitely make it. Okay, so all you need to do is take the yellow, um, the yellow, whatever that, scraper, and you can scrape off the black and it brings the colours underneath. And then you just put that on top of there and then you fold it in like that and do that. It's dead, dead simple. And the most amazing thing is because we're going to use these in a little while is that, hopefully, it works. Thank you very much. The the best craft thing I've ever done in my whole life. I'm very proud of it. It will be in our front room for the rest of our lives. So I'd like you to make that uh, while I'm talking for a little while. The day of Pentecost was the beginning of the church. Before Pentecost, the disciples were kind of in limbo. Their friend and Messiah, Jesus, had left them to go to work from home. And now they were waiting in the upper room, not sure what to do next. And then Pentecost came. And the disciples were gathered together, praying and worshipping God. And suddenly, the Holy Spirit descended upon them and they were transformed in that moment they began speaking in other languages and praising God they suddenly understood why Jesus had died and risen again the Holy Spirit had taught them in that instant what Jesus had been trying to show them over the last three years and they poured out into the streets and preached to thousands of people who had come to see what was going on And thousands of people were baptised that very day into this new faith, so new that it didn't even have a name yet. The church had begun. And this was a historical event. This actually happened. And we celebrate it today on what's called Pentecost Sunday. But the question you might ask, does it have any relevance to our lives today? See, the most important aspect of the story is the fact that the Holy Spirit transformed the disciples. He gave them a new boldness and a new understanding. He enabled them to perform miracles. Peter went from a mildly brave follower who messed up a great deal to a man who was forever full of boldness, power, and confidence, who refused to stop proclaiming the gospel even when his life was in danger. He was transformed from that man who, when asked by a servant girl, do you know this man, Jesus, who's been arrested? He goes, no, no, nothing to do with me. To a man that even when his life was threatened, he said, I can't stop talking about Jesus. He was transformed. And he wrote about this confidence he had in his letter, which we're going to be studying, as I said earlier, in our new series of Real Talks. And we're going to look at how we can have confidence even in a complex world. And as a church, and as followers of Jesus, I believe we all need today a Pentecost experience. We need to have the Holy Spirit working through us because we can't do anything by ourselves. The Holy Spirit is God himself working through us to do the things he wants done. He is there to guide us, to teach us, and to comfort us. Do you know what? It's hard being a follower of Jesus at school or at work. 
Actually, in many aspects of our lives for a whole host of reasons. It's hard at times for us to be confident in what we believe when all around us people are saying, oh, don't be ridiculous. Why do you believe that? Why do you do that? We all need the power of the Holy Spirit to enable us to follow Jesus, to keep going, for all of us to be bold and confident and powerful whatever challenges we face. Even if, like that game illustrates, even if our circumstances change, we can still be bold and confident and powerful. And so, today, we're going to have an opportunity to pray for the Holy Spirit to be poured into each one of our lives. On the video there, it said it was a gift, a gift from Father God. It's still a gift today, but we have to be willing to receive it in our lives. And we're going to pray in a moment, we have some time to pray, that the Holy Spirit would come and make us bolder, that we would know his power in us. And that we would have the same confidence as Peter. That we would have that transformation from someone who has those great moments, those embarrassing moments, to someone who, whatever the circumstances, we have a confidence, not in our own ability, but a confidence in God by his spirit. The confidence to be kind to people. The confidence to stand up for what is right. And the confidence to talk to people about how much God loves them. And so we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to come into our lives. We are ordinary people with a supernatural spirit, just like Peter. So we're going to worship in a moment and invite the Holy Spirit to come and just transform us. I don't know about you, but over the last year, I felt like at times the tank is a bit empty. You know, it's been challenging the last year. And maybe you felt like you're just clinging on to Jesus. Well, today, on this Pentecost Sunday, I believe that Jesus wants to come by his Spirit and fill us afresh and gift us with the confidence and the boldness and the power and the comfort that Peter had experienced. And so, we've got elders here that are willing to pray for you this morning, but you don't need them. Because we carry the Holy Spirit in us, those of us who know and love Jesus. And so I invite you, children, children, I invite you to pray for your parents and just simply pray for them that the Holy Spirit would come upon your mum and your dad or your granddad or your grandma. I invite you, husbands and wives, to pray for one another. I invite you, parents, to pray for your children or your grandchildren. I invite you to pray for one another. And the great thing is, we're allowed to hug so we can lay on hands today, if you wish. And please ask if the person is comfortable with that. So we're just going to continue worshipping. And then we've got different things around the room. So over here, we have bubbles. And we're going to invite you to stand on those steps. And they're going to lift the ring up. And there's going to be a huge bubble, we pray, hopefully that's going to cover you. Because one of the things the Spirit does is infill us. It fills us. And that's not just for kids, that's for adults or anyone. So you can go over there and uh, Andrea and Jody are going to do that. But go with, your, go with others. And as the, as the bubbles are lifted up over your head, or maybe over your knees, depending on how successful we are on that, we're going to pray that God's Spirit would come. Over on the sofas at the back are these hearts and one of the things one of the things that the Holy Spirit is is he's a comforter and you may just need to have a big hug with the Holy Spirit and so I invite you to go to the back and there's some spray there so you can spray it although it's got the Holy Spirit in it so that's the best disinfectant in the world Uh, but you can go at the back there spray it and then just hug it and then people will be praying for you that you would know God's comfort this morning and then finally children Bring your pin wheels. Bring your bring your pinwheels and pray for one another. And as you do, just 
blow on them and blow the Holy Spirit into people's lives. So I invite you to stand. This is going to be a holy mess, okay? But we, I believe we all need the indwelling of the Holy Spirit on this Pentecost Sunday. We all need it. I need it. You need it. And so we're going to do that now and just ask people to pray for you or pray for one another where you are this morning as we continue worshipping. Let's pray.